Okay, welcome to lesson two, macro and micronutrients. Uh, today we're going to look at some of the constituent components that are required for uh, any and all living beings to survive, but mainly we're going to look at it from an animal's perspective because the, the key thing here that we're, we need to remember is that we're looking at uh, this idea of animal physiology and anatomy from like an animal perspective. Now, that's not to say that most of these nutrients aren't required by all life, including microorganism life and plant life as well, but we'll kind of talk a little bit about that as we move towards this unit and as well as plants for our next unit. Uh, so when we look at uh, when we look about macro and micronutrients, it's very important to understand the difference between the two. Macro, we need large quantities. So macro is like a Latin term for large amounts of, whereas micro is a term for smaller quantities. So the macronutrients that we need in large quantities are those carbohydrates like sugars, proteins, lipids, which are fats, as well as water. The micronutrients that require in smaller uh, dosages or quantities are the things like vitamins and minerals. So when we think about carbs as a macronutrient, uh, it's very important that we recognize what a carbohydrate is because it is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It is a primary energy source, which is preferred over all others. And the cellular respiration, which is a process we haven't really talked about, but it is kind of the big thing that you will need to know from biology this year as well as next year. Uh, it's the process of taking oxygen as well as sugar or glucose and breaking it down and utilizing that process of breaking it down to produce energy as well as carbon dioxide and water. Next year in grade 12, when you take biology again, whether it's with me, with me or Ms. Pullman, uh, you'll study quite a bit in detail about this process and it will really help you to understand and appreciate this process of cellular respiration now uh, because when we get to that biology component with it in grade 12 and you have to learn about the organic chemistry components of it, uh, a strong grasp and understanding of chemistry as well as this biology uh, will really be uh, good for you next year when you take grade 12 bio. Some simple carbohydrates that we look at are those monosaccharides and disaccharides. So glucose, galactose, fructose for mono, and then disaccharides are maltose, lactose, and sucrose. You'll notice a few of those should sound familiar to you. Uh, lactose is one of the key sugars that are in dairy products. Sucrose is one of the key sugar components, as well as fructose, in most plants and fruits. And then glucose is the main sugar component that our body eventually either utilizes or turns it into to break down. Uh, so I'm not going to have you all focus too hard on the simple carbohydrate structures. Uh, just know that monosaccharides are single ring sugars, whereas disaccharides are double ring sugars. And the name should kind of give it away there for you. That mono is that single ring. Di is going to be that double ring with regards to how many carbon uh, ring structures make up the molecule. So again, sucrose is looking at table sugar, lactose, dairy products, and then maltose is a broken down form of some starches. Again, I'm not really going to have you focus too much on this. It's not really an expectation. But again, I'm showing you this because for next year, you're definitely going to have to understand how to utilize these types of sugars. And it's going to be a huge component for the uh, metabolic processes unit that you study in grade 12. So really, 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 please take to consideration these structures uh, because you will need to know them for next year. With regards to complex carbohydrates, it's important to recognize that uh, these simple sugars join together to form polysaccharides, poly meaning many, so many saccharides or many sugars. These complex carbohydrates are then going to be broken down into simple sugars, and they're broken into disaccharides and monosaccharides by the body, and that way they can utilize them because most of these sugars are found in that polysaccharide form. Uh, and some of these polysaccharides include but aren't limited to starches, cellulose and glycogen. Uh, with starches, they're formed and stored in plants, these long branching chains of those glucose molecules, uh, and you see them in starchier things like potatoes, um, in certain types of wheat, and other types of root vegetables. Cellulose or fiber, which is super important for uh, gut health as well as gut microorganism health. These are all the plant cell walls, and the plant cell walls are usually, usually made up of that cellulose, but they're also long chains of glucose molecules, uh, and they can't really be digested fully uh, but by our actual metabolic processes, but they are digested by the bacteria that live inside of our gut. So just because we can't digest it uh, with the systems that are in place doesn't mean we can't utilize that fiber 
for our, our benefit and our health. And then lastly, glycogen, the one that we look at, it's glucose stored in animal liver. Um, it's a long branching chain for later use. So the body takes that glucose and it, and it stores it in the form of glycogen and it stores it in your liver. It stores it in other parts of your body, like in fat, and it's used later for, uh, for energy if your body doesn't have access to it. So just on the note of fats, what are they? Well, they act as an energy source, though glucose is preferred uh, compared to fats, it's still considered a, a very high energy uh, macronutrient. So they help with absorption of vitamins. They are a huge component in cellular membrane production. They also help provide insulation for human beings as well as other animals. And the, uh, the systems that, are, that communicate with the brain and the brain communicates with, they take fats and they utilize those for what's called hormones or steroid hormones. And that's a way for which the body can communicate with different systems. It's made up out of a triglyceride, which is a glycerol plus three fatty acid chains. And again, it's important to recognize here, I'm not gonna have you know the structures off by heart, but you bet you're gonna have to know it for next year. So please take it uh, seriously when you look at these structures. The key thing here is that the changing uh, in the three fatty acid chains will change the actual property of the fat. So a, a trans fat versus saturated fat versus unsaturated fat is looking at how saturated or how the fatty acid chains behave and act. So when you look at a saturated fat, they're usually solid at room temperatures like butter or any type of animal fat. And they tend to be less healthy simply because they are saturated and their chains look a little bit different. Unsaturated fats are usually liquid at room temperature and they're considered healthier like olive oil, avocados, uh, coconut oil, or not coconut, sorry, um, vegetable oils. These are usually made by plants. And then finally, the trans fats, which are a particularly harmful type of unsaturated fat, uh, they can raise what's called the bad cholesterol and lower levels of good cholesterol in, in most animals, but specifically in humans. They help extend shell, shell life and they tend to be quite cheap. So trans fats are usually used in industrial fryers and they're usually put into some foods, but however, it is banned in Canada. So it's quite an interesting thing that something as simple as a trans fat, which is, well, you know, and something naturally produced in some cases uh, can be banned as a result of its unhealthy side effects because they tend to be quite unhealthy for you when consumed in large quantities. Proteins is the last macronutrients that we're going to kind of look at um, that is created or utilized from animal or plant life. And they can be used as an energy source if those carbs or fats are low, uh, but they are usually more important for those cellular activities. So the things that are responsible for breaking down and making the parts of the body that are required for day-to-day -day growth and healthy environments, or sorry, day-to-day -day growth and healthy living uh, are usually made up of those proteins. So enzymes, which help with digestion and breaking down things are, are made out of proteins. And the proteins are made up of what's called amino acids. There's 20 of them that you'll have to know for next year, but uh, it's not something you need to know for now. And these are the building blocks of all proteins. So these amino acids, they come together and they form these huge chains and they're able to kind of in those combinations of any combination of those 20 different forms of amino acid, they can fulfill a wide variety of roles. And so our bodies can produce 12 of these amino acids based on the food that we take in, but there are eight others that we cannot produce and we need to take in from our food. These are what's called essential amino acids. And then foods that contain high amounts of these proteins are eggs, nuts, meats, beans, fish. And it's interesting because usually, usually we tend to eat more protein than we actually need. Um, a diet technically sound of, for sound healthy living in, in any type of society usually should be consisting of mostly plant and fruit, uh, as well as some legumes and, and if possible in, in sporadic amounts, uh, meats and meat products. But Usually in, in society, we tend to eat a little bit more protein in the form of meat specifically uh, than our bodies actually need. So it's an interesting point of conversation. Uh, you'll see a little bit more when you get your project next week with regards to, to when we look at this type of stuff, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And then lastly, in terms of the macronutrients that uh, we can get from non-production of animal or plants, uh, it's water. We're made up of 70% of it and it's needed for all sorts of different things, but uh, I would say it's probably most important in terms of removal of waste as well as blood. But like I said, the cytoplasm, extracellular fluid, all of that stuff is quite important. Uh, so when we do obtain quite a bit of our water through food intake, but approximately two liters needs to be taken from liquid water uh, as a result of sweat, 
urine, breathing, waste, whatever you want to call it, we lose that amount of water uh, any given day. So it's important that you stay hydrated and drink lots of water. Lastly, micronutrients are the things that are inorganic compounds or organic compounds in the sense of the fact that they tend to have that CHNO, right? So vitamins are those organic compounds. They regulate uh, cell function and growth. They tend to be water soluble in the cases of vitamin B and C, and they cannot be stored in the body. So excessive quantities are, are excreted in the urine. So that's why if you take a multivitamin, uh, your urine tends to be a little bit darker and it tends to have more of those vitamins dissolved in it because your body can only absorb so much of it and it needs to be consistently replenished through your diet. Vitamins A, D, and E are what's called fat soluble and they can be stored in fat tissue uh, for later use. And it's interesting because it's healthy for you to take in those vitamins, but if you have too many in your body at any given moment, uh, it can be actually become toxic as a result of the processes that those vitamins eventually lead to. So it's uh, health, again, healthy diet, well-balanced diet is the best way with which to get these vitamins, these large organic compounds into your body. Uh, the inorganic compounds or those minerals are elements from the periodic table. So things like sodium, like in sodium chloride or salt, calcium, which is uh, very important for women, especially as they get older because their bone density tends to decrease uh, over time, depending on if you have osteoporosis in your family or not. But even just generally, it tends to happen for all people, but more specifically for women. And then lastly, iron, or, which is really important for our red blood cells, which we kind of talked about in genetics and we'll talk more about in this unit. Okay, folks, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I'm going to talk more about the project at, towards the end of this week, and I'll post it sometime next week for you all. And again, like I said in my, my stuff yesterday, it's probably going to be the last assignment. Uh, we may do one more quiz on top of that, but we haven't yet decided. So if you have questions, please reach out and let me know. Otherwise, take care, folks.